For this video today, we're going to have a look at a Panasonic Pro Monitor, the one that is sitting in front of us right now. It is a Panasonic BT-M2090Y, a professional color video monitor. The date of manufacture is around 1997. It's 20 inches in size. It has a 4x3 aspect ratio for the tube. Um, a curved tube. Alright, so we'll have a tour of it and we'll get a close up of the front. I might actually turn the Mega Drive off right now because the illumination of the screen is making the rest of the image darker. But it does have sound. It has one speaker there. It doesn't go real loud, but it does have sound. A um, little bit of damage there on plastic coating. It is a little bit of a rough monitor, this one. But the tube's in really good nick, there's no scratches or anything on it. So you've got a volume knob there, phase, chroma, brightness and contrast. Uh, chroma and phase have no effect with an RGB source connected to the monitor. Then you have uh, various other controls, underscan, pulse cross. Um, pulse cross does not affect RGB pictures either. Color off and on. Uh, blue check, there's memory memory mode, you can adjust the settings to suit your preference and press memory mode to either go to those settings or to whatever the monitor is currently set up. External sync, you'll need that for RGB. And there's your input selection which gives away a little bit of what it's got or everything really. It's got video A and B which is for composite signals and RG compo RGB component in the middle and then S-Video on the end with YC. Over here you have control system, Degore's menu, enter, up, down, left, right, power on and off. There's the model number on the front. You can see the bezel here is a bit, a bit scratched up and even on the top. See it's very similar to Sony's PVMs. I would say that this is Panasonic's equivalent to the PVMs. Very similar metal casing uh, hand grips or hand holes there for handling one on the other side. The other side of the monitor is exactly the same. Go around to the back and I'll actually disconnect. I'll disconnect all those cables in there now so that we have a clearer view of what is in front of us, of what the inputs exactly look like. So let's go to the badge. On the back again Panasonic color video monitor 230 volts in, it's not a multi-volt, it doesn't go 100, 110. Now this is quite interesting too, manufactured by Victor Company of Japan, which is JVC. I'm just starting to think with what I've been dabbling in lately, JVC and Panasonic monitors, there's quite a lot of similarity between the two of in their pro monitors and I'm, I'm starting to think they're really, really just one and the same. Um, sort of endeavor from those two companies. There's your power input, IEC connector. Let's start with BNCs there, in and out for composite video. The 75 ohm termination available there. There's your sync in and out. Again with the termination. There's your S video input using the sort of consumer standard S video four pinned in minis. RGB and component inputs, one side for RGB, the other side for component. And over here you've got audio in and out, it's only mono. And you can see the flow chart with the white lines there directing between the audio and the video signals, different, different audio ins for different video ins. And then you've got a remote control connection there with a DIN of some sort as well. So that's it for your connections. What I'll do is open up the monitor and we'll just have a very quick look on the inside. The back is off. Well, I suppose not really the back plate is not off, but the U-shaped metal shielding, the big cover is off. And I may not be able to pick it up on the camera, but the tube is a Panasonic tube and it is 48 centimeters in size, which does correspond with the 20 inch reference in the model number. So usual typical deal there with your boards pretty clean. I don't think I've really got much more to show. I can, or I forgot to show you that on the back here there is also adjustment for focus. 
if you get the correct tool and insert into the hole there you can adjust the focus from the outside I don't think there will be any need to go inside one of these to make adjustments there is an on-screen service menu which gives you lots of adjustment capabilities so you probably won't have to ever venture inside to make any adjustments let's have a look at the on-screen menu system when we press the menu button on the front of the monitor the on-screen display comes up here we can choose the aspect ratio 4x3 or 16x9 there are several other things we can fiddle with but do not affect RGB signals and filter select that is for composite and probably S video as well comb filter notch filter both not sure what these peakings do AFC color temperature 9300 or 6500 um, component level again other color choices again for those I think and then we have a selection between RGB and component it's on RGB now and then it, now it's in component it says SDI with component there but it does accept analog component I've had the PS2 and I'll probably show you that shortly hooked up in component so SDI is a digital signal and I'm guessing that it takes that as well but I can assure you it does take analog component now there is another menu it's a bit more of a hidden one it's easy to get to it's not the service menu there is a service menu as well but this other extended menu is accessed by holding enter and then pressing menu and then you get into it and it's got a white balance adjustment where you can adjust all those colors there and a few other things that you can change but the important thing is here is that if you select RGB rather than component now go into that extended menu you have size and centering come up as well size and centering only applies to RGB and you can adjust horizontal and vertical position as well as the sizes of those two axes or axes or however you want to pronounce that that only applies in RGB but that's quite important to have because I had to increase some of the values to get the games to fit full screen unfortunately you don't have to go inside the monitor and adjust any pots to do that now if you want to get into the service menu you've got to hold down enter and press the gauze that brings up an S in the top left corner then you hold enter and press menu service menu please don't touch now that's it that's this is the proper service menu here if you go into deflection block now this is where you really need to have the service manual handy and if anyone wants a copy of the service manual just give me a message I actually looked for it online and couldn't find it I had to actually buy it that occasionally happens where I can't find a service manual I have to actually buy it online but if you want a copy of it I can give you a link or something I'll send it to you in an email but it'll tell you all the values of these different values here do 4 set at value 15 if you look up the service manual they tell you all about it and again you can adjust more screen properties in here so it's all on screen service serviceable so now let's just try out a couple of consoles and see how it goes the mega drive is running right now with this grid pattern the grid pattern is actually geometrically very straight but it's suited somewhat to a pure flat screen rather than the curved screen that it is displayed on right now as you see there is missing picture in the corners uh, you probably could adjust that to become curved to suit the curvature of the screen but as it is it doesn't bother me too much because it is actually square if you know what I mean I've got Mercs on the Mega Drive on now could choose pretty much any game it just happens to be what I'm in the mood for at the moment my only complaint thus far is that I can't actually get the horizontal width of the monitor quite big enough to fill the entire screen up you can see the blue line on the left and on the right the two lines vertical blue lines one on the left one on the right that's due to the screen or the picture not being stretched far enough horizontally to fill the screen right out it's the same with the PS2 although it is pretty minor 
in that there's not much blue line showing there at the moment, but that is one criticism of the monitor that I do have. And I've been into the service menu and the extended menu and maximized the values concerning horizontal width, but that's as wide as I can get it. So now instead of the Mega Drive, the PlayStation 2 is hooked up via component cable and I'm about to boot up Capcom Fighting Jam and it has the option to go into progressive so we'll test that out, we'll test see if it can do progressive or not no, it's split in half so it can't do it no, we will not switch to progressive mode now you may notice too, and I have adjusted it once again to try and compensate is that on the left side and the right side there are um, a couple of borders like Merck's had, probably a bit bigger than what Merck's had. Really need a. Probably can't see it with the bezel and the black sidebars there, but uh, picture wise, actually looks pretty good. I'll just quickly start it up. Give it a little bit of volume. A little bit of contrast too. Eh? Hopefully the camera picks it up better than what it is. I'll just move it back a bit, move it a bit forward maybe. Anyway, it does look actually pretty good. I'd probably still take a PVM over this. I don't really recount the issues with filling the screen up horizontally with PVMs. But then again, I wouldn't exactly just dismiss this thing straight away either. If I saw one around and it was on the cards to buy, I wouldn't hesitate in recommending to pick up the Panasonic here. Pretty uncommon though, you don't see a lot of Panasonic monitors around. Anyhow, it's not a bad unit. And I've got a few more monitors yet to um, make videos of, so just stick around, keep watching. Anyhow, thanks for watching this one and I'll see you next time. Bye.